Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 15th of February. Bacha Khan University reopens 26 days after terror attack. Rift between Taliban factions comes to four in rare video. And civilian casualties in Afghanistan hit record high in 2015, cites UN report. And now for all the details, the Bacha Khan University in Charsadda district of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province reopened on Monday nearly a month following a terror attack on the campus. Police and security agencies were put on alert at the institute as the classes resumed. Even teachers were allowed to carry their licensed guns on the campus for security. The varsity remained closed for 26 days amid security concerns after 21 people, mostly students, were killed when a group of gunmen stormed into the campus. The militants are said to be belonging to a faction of Pakistan tehreek e taliban outfit. The incident has shattered a sense of security in the region, which was reminiscent of the 2014 terrorist attack on Army Public School in Peshawar in the same province in which 134 students were killed. As many as 56 Jewotag seminaries in Pakistan have been suspected of terrorist links. Pakistan seminaries receive heavy donations from abroad, but most of them allegedly use the money for suspicious activities. The religious seminaries geotagged by the Punjab Information Technology Board have been put in Category A for their suspected link to banned organizations. According to sources, most of these seminaries identify themselves with the Diobandi sect. The geotagging of the seminaries is a part of the National Action Plan of the Pakistan government against terrorism. This comes after Pakistan authorities earlier this month claimed to have sealed 182 seminaries for their alleged involvement in propagating extremism and other suspicious activities. These seminaries, also called madarsas, are independent schools where Islam is taught as the main subject. But links between Pakistan seminaries and terror outfits has become a source of concern for many years. Such seminaries in Pakistan have often been accused of recruiting jihadists and financing militancy. Concern over China-Pakistan economic corridor mounts in Gilgit-Baltistan. Many fear that the $46 billion project will not only bring environmental changes, but will also cause cultural miseries in the region. The much-publicized China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC, does not seem to enthuse people of Gilgit-Baltistan. Pakistan government may have dubbed the economic corridor as an inspiring model to boost economy of the region, but locals have serious doubts. According to media reports, Pakistan government has identified 27 sites for special economic zones in Punjab, Sindh and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provinces which are involved in the project. But Gilgit-Baltistan has been excluded. The two sides. Kashmiri leaders claim that the Pakistan government is only exploiting the rich resources of the region and the people of Gilgit-Baltistan will not reap any benefit from the $46 billion project. और इनका जो हक है कम से कम गिलगित बल्सान में दो इकोनॉमिक ज़ोन भी बनने चाहिए बाकी सुबह का हक है तो गिलगित बल्सान का सबसे पहले हक है Many fear that CPEC will not only be disastrous for the environment but will also bring about adverse effects on the culture and tradition of the region एक नया कल्चर यहाँ पर डेवलप होगा एक नई तहजीब यहाँ पर आएगी वो कल्चर और वो तहजीब जिसको आप मादर पिदर आजाद और बरहना कल्चर कहते हैं लिहाजा उसकी जहां पर माशी उसके फवायद हैं वहीं पर तहजीबी रिवायात के एतबार से और आपकी अपनी सकाफत और कल्चर के एतबार से उसके इंतहाई नेगेटिव 
اثرات بھی ہیں ان اثرات کے لیے بھی ہم نے تیار ہونا ہے The multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor aims to connect Gwadar port in southeastern Pakistan to China's northwestern region of Xinjiang through Gilgit Baltistan via a network of highways, railways and pipelines to transport goods, oil and gas. But people in Gilgit Baltistan say the Pakistan government is least bothered about the betterment of the people in the region and is only interested in getting contracts and subcontracts of these projects from the Chinese conglomerates. Afghanistan has expressed a serious concern over the kidnapping of an ex-Afghan governor Sayyid Fazlullah Wahidi in Islamabad. Afghanistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has asked Pakistan to use all of its resources to ensure safe release of Wahidi. The ex-governor had visited Islamabad along with his family for acquiring visas to UK from the British Embassy and was abducted from a busy marketplace by unknown gunmen on Friday. Although Islamabad police say they have made significant progress in the case, the leader has not been rescued yet. The place from where Wahidi was abducted in Islamabad is a high security area that houses politicians, bureaucrats and expats. Ties between Afghanistan and Pakistan have strained in the recent times as Afghanistan blames the country for sponsoring and sheltering Taliban militants who are fighting an ongoing bloody insurgency in Afghanistan. Moving on to news from neighboring Afghanistan, a rare video has surfaced in Afghanistan which has brought to light sharp differences which have erupted within the ranks of the Taliban and which would make it almost impossible for peace talks to be held. Senior Taliban leaders who are seen in this video have had years of stay in Pakistan including medical treatment and they have ruled out a united Taliban voice. We have this report from Kabul. The quadrilateral meeting in Islamabad between Afghanistan, Pakistan, the United States and China was part of the latest effort to find a negotiated end to the nearly 15 years of war in Afghanistan. However, a dissident Afghan Taliban group that supports Mullah Muhammad Rasool has released a new video in which the loyalists call Mullah Akhtar Mansoor, the successor to the group's longtime former leader, Mullah Omar, an ISI puppet. In the video, the militants declare a nationwide military campaign against the Mullah Akhtar Mansoor faction. Loyalists of Mullah Rasool have also demonstrated their power against the Mullah Mansoor faction. They pledge to give a well-measured response to the rhetoric attacks of Mullah Mansoor faction. They reveal that Mullah Omar was killed 14 or 18 years ago in Pakistan. In a recent interview to a private television channel in Pakistan, Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf chief Imran Khan confirmed that senior Taliban leaders have stayed for years in Pakistan and received facilities including medical treatments. In 2000, we came to the hospital record. When we came to the hospital, the Taliban recognized the Pakistan government. So, Shaukat Khan is the case. जी ये आप ऑफिशियली कंफर्म कर रहे हैं हाँ जी हमारे हॉस्पिटल के रिकॉर्ड्स में उन्होंने फिर बात होगी मुझे तो नहीं पता था मुझे याद नहीं था क्योंकि मुझे बाद में उन्होंने थैंक किया जब हो गया पीस एफर्ट्स ब्रोक डाउन लास्ट ईयर आफ्टर इट बिकेम नोन दैट मुल्ला मोहम्मद ओमार हु हैड सैंक्शन द टॉक्स इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस हैड बीन डेड एंड दस दिस लेड टू डीप फिजर्स विद इन द इंसर्जेंट मूवमेंट इन अफगानिस्तान Civilian casualties in Afghanistan have hit record levels for the seventh year in row in 2015, a United Nations report stated. The report suggests that children and women have paid a heavy price in the war-torn country amid a surge in attacks by armed groups. A report. Over 11,002 Afghan civilians have been killed and wounded in 2015 the highest number of casualties recorded since the study on Afghan civilian casualties due to armed conflicts began in 2009. At least 3,545 non-combatants have died and over 7,457 were injured as security forces faced a surge in attacks by the Taliban and other armed groups. The total number of civilian casualties in 2015 marked a 4% rise over the previous year record, the report said. 
Afghan women and children have paid heavy price, as reports stated that one in four casualties was a child, while one in ten was women. As compared to previous year, women and child casualties in 2015 have increased by 37% and 14% respectively. Engagements killed and injured the most civilians, followed by IEDs, complex and suicide attacks. These tactics, combined with targeted killings, accounted for 90% of total civilian casualties. According to the report, anti-government elements were responsible for over 62% of casualties, while 14% casualties were caused by armed forces. The investigators have pointed heavy fighting in Afghanistan's northern city of Kunduz, which briefly fell to the Taliban in late September last year, and surge in insurgency in the capital city Kabul as the main factors behind the rise. The UN has documented nearly 59,000 deaths and injuries since it began systematically recording civilian casualties in Afghanistan in 2009. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Bacha Khan University reopens 26 days after terror attack. Rift between Taliban factions comes to fore in rare video. And civilian casualties in Afghanistan hit record high in 2015, cites UN report. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.